And as we prepare to chant the words of Ahava Rabbah about God's boundless love, we should all take a pause and consider where should we pour out our boundless love this week? Surrounded by so much darkness, whom deserves our love this week? So it goes without saying that I can't sleep at night thinking about how best do I help Israel tomorrow morning when I wake up? What is the first thing I should do? How should I mobilize this community? Which organizations best deserve publicity in this moment? But as I spoke about last night at Kabbalat Shabbat services, if you think that the war is just being waged there, then you have a very myopic view of what is happening right now in the world. When we were attacked on September 11th, President Bush stood before the country and said the simplest, most profound statement. The world has a choice to stand with us or to stand with the terrorists. The world is once again presented with a choice right now. And we see those who see this moment with absolute moral clarity. And we see those who see this moment with absolute moral bankruptcy. It's happening all over the world. In Germany, they stopped a soccer match to put the message on the board to bring home Hirsch Goldberg, Poland. At Columbia University, thousands marched, screaming with vitriolic hatred that Jews have finally gotten what they deserve. Many of our universities have been defiled this week. The war is not only being waged in the south of Israel. It's being waged in the halls of thought and quote-unquote morality all around this country. And I'm sorry to say that there are Jewish names on almost all of the buildings of all of these places, battlefields around the country. We cannot go back to the way that things were last week. We can never go back. And what that means, especially to the young people in the room, to the middle schoolers and the teenagers who are here, is that before us, we celebrate a child reaching adulthood and taking on the responsibility of choice. And she will have profound choice about what journeys to engage in in her life, where to travel. And I'm sorry to say, but after the last week, if Jews continue to apply to Harvard University in the same numbers, then we have learned nothing. If Jews apply to Columbia University in the same numbers, then we have learned nothing. I never thought that it would be a life goal to make Gainesville, Florida, a beacon of Yiddishkeit in this country. But my, my, write it down right now. I will use every fiber in my being to bring every Jewish dollar of philanthropy away from UCLA to University of Florida, to University of Colorado, to University of Southern California. <laughs> These rallies don't just pop up. They don't just occur. They're fostered by the leadership of these universities who take Jewish dollars and then spit in our faces. We cannot unsee the images that we've seen coming out of Israel, but we can never unsee the images 
that occurred at Columbia University and UCLA either. We cannot unsee them. And so now we have a choice. We have a choice as a Jewish community. As we raise our kids through junior high school and high school, to whom should we show our love? Because our precious resource, our most precious resource as a people is not our dollars. It's our children. Whom should we trust to educate our children? Where should we want to expose the minds of our children? To what ideologies? To what ideologies? To an ideology that says that, God forbid, we're the perpetrators and deserve what we've received? Or to an ideology, if you read President Ben Sass's email from University of Florida, that says that there's no question of what occurred this week. And that he, as a former senator and Republican, stands shoulder to shoulder with President Biden, a Democrat, because this isn't the moment of partisanship in this country. This is a moment where all of us have to declare that we either stand with Israel or we stand with Hamas. And for those of us who stand with Israel, we should not forget who stood with us. For those of us who stood with Hamas, we should not forget who stood with Hamas. And as we move forward, this Shabbos, next Shabbos, years to come, as our kids begin applying to colleges, as we continue to want to donate philanthropically to these universities, we have to begin to pivot our Ahava Rabbah, our boundless love as an American Jewish community to benefit those who decided in this moment of crisis to stand with the Jewish people, to stand with the United States of America, and to stand with all that's moral and good. Ahava Rabbah can be found on the top of page. For the last week, we've had a poster board outside in the hallway for people to enter the names of Israelis who were killed during the attack, who are being held hostage, who are currently missing, or who are currently called up to fight for the future of the Jewish people. We put the poster board out. We've had to replace the poster board four times because it has filled up with names from this community of people with whom we are connected. And so to put a human face on this war so that we understand that it's not people over there that are fighting, it's families here inside of our community who are fighting, it's brothers and sisters and loved ones who are fighting. We're going to recite the names each and every week until the end of the war. There have been rituals developed in the last week to try to remember those who are missing, those who have been murdered, those who are fighting. There was a women's group that began advocating that everyone last night should dye their challahs blue. We should begin eating blue challahs till the end to stand in solidarity. There were other traditions that emerged as well. One that Blair and I took up last night has to do with the amount of candles that you light at your Shabbos table. And so in the Hasidic tradition, we light the Shabbos candles to reflect the amount of children that we have, that we think of each of them in the moment that we light the candles. As you have more children, you light more candles. In many Hasidic families, it ends up just being a bonfire by the end. For the first time in many, many years, instead of lighting three candles, Blair and I lit four. We lit four and explained to our children that in this moment, we think of not only Hirsch as our son, 
We think of all those being held in Gaza as our children. We think of them and remember them and pray for them because there will be a day after the war. There will be the next VBS trip to Israel. And in that moment, when we meet those who were held hostage, when we meet those who went to fight, when we sit with families and comfort them who had loved ones murdered, we will tell them with honesty and sincerity that we never forgot you. We stood with you every moment we could. These are the names. Hirsch Goldberg, Poland. David Elitsur, Amit Ayelet, Greg Waxman, Amir Tsur, Zichron Olivracha, Ben Aronson, Rotem Schneider, Eli Pester, Yosef Zen Ben Al Khaliba, Elon Goldberg, Ram Eyal, Shai Burke, Nadav Maiman, Shalom Shirid Ben Galia, Neve Tel Tsur, Roy Hakimi, Ofek Arizi, Amir Fisher, Tal Halimi, Oren Golden, Yaron Shachar, Ideal Kahana, Nave Kahana, Yuval Alster, Golan Alster, Alicia Farkas, Roe Shafir, Adami Farkas, Kfir Merrill, Yarden Lahat, Ben Josephson, Yuval Spiva, Avraham Ben Gita, Joshua Levitan, Rotem Rachel Levi Zichonali Vracha, Benjamin Yisrael Ben Batya, Svi Shemaria Ben Batya, Yehudi Yitzchak Ben Batya, Shlomi Ben Sara, Natan Rubin, Ariel Rubin, Shauli Rubin, Asher Rubin, Naomi Rubin, Iftach Nevo, David Berger, Gilboa, May Naim, Zichonali Vracha, Yoav Mayalev, Yossi Mizreb, Eli Mizreb, Daniel Mizreb, Sam Selenfreud, Noga Cohen, Gila Shen, Ben Hardin, Aaron Zeff, Shnir Yom Tov, Moshe Yom Tov, Matan Yom Tov, Aaron Moses, Shoshana Korn, the Novik family, the Heman family, the Sedaris family, Yossi Zav Kovian, Amiram Cooper, Narit Cooper, Yarden Madadshai, Abir Azule, Omer Cohen, Safir Cohen, Idan Cohen, Michael Pazberzin, Dylan Corin, Daniel Seligman, Davy Mendelssohn, Gavi Mendelssohn, Will Bernstein, Elia Mimon, Yosef Ben Devora, Hanan Ben Devora, Shira Spindel, Mai Goldman, Ofik Breitstein, Yogev Ben Yifat, Anat Ban Aliza Be Akiva, Oren Ben Aliza Ve Akiva, David Feldman, Oded Zucker, Gil Rubenstein, Dan Kaliski, Gilboa, Gaia and Gila Rosilio, Or Amzalag, Muli Amzalag, Ophir Liebstein, Zichon Olivracha, Keshit Kasrata, Zichon Olivracha, Natan Cohen Marian, Magnus, Zichon Olivracha, Ofik Arizi, Zichon Olivracha, Mira Stenhal, Zichron Ali Vracha, Yochi Kugler, Ophir Aburabia, Imbal Aburabia, Yoni Steinberg, Avi Stendel. And I was forwarded by my brother's community the names of all 164 hostages that Jews are praying for across the world. We recite a blessing at this moment that I thought I would never have to recite in my life a blessing that is presented to us for Jewish captives held around the world. We recite together, Elohimu matir asurim misgav ledach, misgav leitot betzara, shlach atzlacha, shlema, ufidyon gamur lenitunim b'shivya oyev, vekareinu ve'aneu imo anochi betzara v'achaltzea v'achabdehu, v'nomar, amen. We place the Israeli flag on our bima, to cover one of the seats so that we understand each and every Shabbos during the war 
that there are those of us who are missing, and we hold a seat on our bima for their return. Eli, Eli, shelo yigamer leolam achor vehayam rishu shel hamayim berak hasham. של המים ברוק השמיים תפילת האדם In a beautiful gesture by the Rasbanya family, they dedicated the sixth Aliyah to all those of us who have family, who have been affected, who have been murdered, who have been taken captive, who are fighting for the state of Israel, I have asked our own Yossi to stand as a symbol in the sixth Aliyah to recite the blessing. If you have family in Israel currently fighting, if you have family in Israel who have been murdered, if you have family in Israel who are currently taken captive, please rise now and stand with Yossi as he recites the blessing for us all. Sixth Aliyah was the start of the big show. Baruch <laughs> <laughs> 